And welcome back. LGBT Pride Month starts this week in June. One organization launching a multilingual ad campaign with a powerful message. You've heard me say so many times that all the faces in the LGBT community are white, all the Asians are straight, where do I belong? The parents are here to tell their stories of love and acceptance, of struggle and disappointment, of shame and celebration in having lesbian, gay, and bisexual and transgender children. We want to provide peer support for parents so that they're supported when their kids want to come out to them and that young people are also supported if they decide to come out, if they are LGBT, so they have a safe place in their own communities. We are so excited to be launching a groundbreaking campaign on family acceptance. Workshops in 12 cities, PSAs on major international channels, leaflets translated into 20 different Asian languages to tell our stories so that we can see the full breadth of our community, the full spectrum in the face of growing racially diverse America. September 28, 2015, it was heartbroken, saddest day of my life and turning point of my life because Skylar took his own life from depression. He was 16 years old and fierce racial justice activist. I didn't understand what it is like to be a transgender and what kind of issues they have. Finally, I understood it, but it cost my child's life. From Skylar, I learned how family acceptance and love is important. It is the only way to save the lives, lives of transgender. So I promised myself to make Skylar's life meant something and save the lives of transgender on his funeral day. About 18 years ago, I started the Southern Baptist Church in the Los Angeles area. And as a church, we were located um, really close to a Christian university. And so on occasion, students would confide in me that they were gay or lesbian. And our response as a church was always to pray the gay away, to send them to reparative therapy. But back in 2007, I grew to have a, a closer relationship with one of the lesbian college students, and she began to humanize what LGBTQ desires were for me, and I finally got it. And so I decided to take time to understand why my culture made me view homosexuality in a negative light, why I was homophobic. And I began to meet people who identified both as gay and Christian, and for the first time I realized that it was possible to love God and be gay. About a couple weeks later, the song on the radio came on by Macklemore, which is this very gay-affirming song, and I asked my son, Drew, who sings the song, and he said, Macklemore, and I, he said, why? And I said, oh, it's because I like the song. And he said, Dad, you know what the song's about? I said, yes, I do, that's why I like it. And then I looked at him and said, Drew, what do you think about the song? And he looked at me, his 15-year-old self, and he said, Dad, I'm gay. The past six years, I've been trying to figure this out, and when I finally became a safe person for him, he comes out to me. And I'm proud to be part of Encapia, a group that is part of telling stories, to make our stories real to people who otherwise might never, ever hear a story like ours. And I know by telling these stories, hearts and minds can begin to change. There are many families that are struggling to accept their LGBTQ children. And I am here to say it can be done. It can be done with patience, with support, with knowledge, and with love. Today, there are many resources and information available, and Capia is here to help. Stay the strong as you can. Remember to ask for help. Love yourself before you can love anyone else because the person you fight battles most with is you. In the end, we must care and respect the seed so that eventually it can bloom and start a chain reaction. Today, I am who I am, and I like who I like, and most importantly, I love myself, and now I have the support I need from the LGBTQ community and my family. Popular media images of the LGBT community is not as diverse as America.
as, di as diverse as the LGBT right. Asian American community is. And we want to make sure that we bring our stories and our voices to the fore. There is no one set rule for coming out. There's also no one set rule for whether or not like your parents know. Like there are some situations where parents definitely like suspect. And then sometimes parents are just kind of either in denial or clueless too. So, so there is no one size fits all for how parents, for what parents see. Uh, when their kids are, when they see their kids growing up before their kids actually disclose or come out to them. I had a fear of what society would tell to my child, and I had a fear of losing my child if I don't support him. And I am so happy right now that I have decided to support my son, that he's living the life that he always wanted to live. I was very moved by all the stories from the parents and I think it's so important to have these conversations in public so all the young people who are coming out can hear the journey of, from the parents' perspective. Well, I think it's harder for an Asian child to come out because of the way society looks at them. You know, you don't see the Asian transgender LGBT in the community or voices. So I think that's a big difference and that's why we need to be there and we need to be, need to be as outspoken as possible. They said that it was like one of the first ever to be doing this in Capia. So I'm excited to see how this grows and how much of a campaign and effect that effect has its community. I am so happy to, uh, to, to know that yeah, there are resources available for those young people and we parents can be part of those resources. So I'm so happy to, to see the result today.